Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Life as an Aspie with me Natalie Sherlock and today is day three of Neurodiversity Week and we are celebrating uh, all things neurodiverse and the key point that I want to talk about today is the whole celebrating the whole, the whole idea of celebrating neurodiversity because so far all I've done is talk about the symptom or the traits or the bad stuff about it but I haven't really mentioned any of the good stuff of which there is uh, quite a lot actually. So for me um, personally I mean you've got um, loads of good things about being a uh, neurodivergent there are things like uh, imagination creativity problem solving um memory which is ironic because i forgot um and talents like our sp- special interests some uh some people are, are really good at art some are really good at math some are really good at music um some are really good at other things like puzzles um and a lot of a lot of people in universities are actually really intelligent um and they're often way beyond their years um you'll hear neurodivergent children come out with these incredible things i mean um and you think usually a grown-up an adult you know sort of says things like that Uh, and it, it always makes me laugh um and um and then there's the fact that um uh, without autistic people without ADHD people we we wouldn't be where we are today um alan turing of course uh saved us all during the war and what the country did to him was absolutely uh appalling but we won't get into that and then there's um then there's i mean all of the the great thinkers of our time have all mo- nearly all been neurodivergent um so it's it's really important to look at the positive things and you know kind of not focus on the negative things uh yeah and this is what will help with acceptance and understanding not only that but we have a we're we're very deep thinkers we often we have a unique perspective on the world and it's not always the same our perspective amongst other neurodivergent people is not always the same you get some neurodivergent people with one world view and then others with a different world view. So it's all jolly interesting. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, it is, uh, for me, really good to be interesting. I mean, I would consider myself interesting. Um, that's not a, a boast or anything. But, like, I've... I mean, normal is just so, like, a yawn. <laughs> so boring, and I've made myself yawn now by faking yawning. Um, but, uh, you know, normal is just so rubbish. I would want to be normal. Um, I certainly wouldn't. Uh, well, <laughs> no, not all the time. I mean, there are t- times that I do struggle, but everyone does. Everyone, not even neurotypical struggle um, on day-to-day, with day-to-day things. And I remember once, I think I've told this story on, on here before, 
um, but um, I'll, for those of the that are new and haven't heard it, or if you've forgotten, um, I was in secondary school and I had a teacher. He was he took us for science and DT. He um, he said one day you'll find that you're really good at something. You'll find something you're really good at, and no one else uh, is as good. Um, and uh, it was kind of like, you know, one day you'll find your niche and, and what have you. And it was really nice. Um, it was uh, something that stayed with me for uh, for all these years later. Um, so that's my advice to everyone else. If you If you find, oh, why am I not good at anything? Why am I a failure? all of this that and the other one day you'll find yourself excelling in something and you think oh i can do this better than this is easy for me why why is everyone else finding it so difficult um that could be you know sort of racing in a car like you you could like or swimming or other some other sport or you know quizzing um it could be anything uh and you know, we all have our niche, we all have our purpose on the earth, I believe, anyway. Um, and I love the film Hugo because it showcases the um, that whole concept of, of purpose in this world and that we all have purpose and, our, and each one of us is a cog in a, a giant machine and each one of us is needed for that cog to keep working, uh, that the machine to keep working, because if you have one, if you take one piece out, it doesn't work. Um, and Asia Butterfield, bless him, is um, he's the same age as me now. I should, um, yeah. Uh, but he was great in that film, uh, brilliant little actor. Um, but. Uh, and Sasha Baron Cohen is in that as well. <laughs> uh, but Hugo also very clearly neurodivergent. Um, the, yeah, so if you haven't seen it, he um, he's an orphan that lives living in France, and he uh, he um, fixes this old automaton, which is like a robot that draws, and um, is a, there's a whole thing about cameras and yeah you should just watch it uh Sasha Baron Cohen plays the gendarme who is after he's like in the he's like the antagonist he's after after um Hugo uh but he has um I don't know if it, I don't think it's an artificial leg but it's uh he got it during the war and it's like a cage a mem- a mechanical leg he's got like a mechanical leg but it keeps like jamming and in the end Hugo actually fixes it um so it's all all jolly nice uh, uh yeah it's um uh, it's a good um good film um yeah that's another thing I was going to talk about my favorite films or programs featuring neurodiverse characters whether it whether they are like confirmed or not um so probably number one hmm what would be number one um yeah probably the british empire just because you know it changed my life and um you know i finally had someone i could identify with on the television um and uh second would be Frasier, even though it's never been actually officially said. I believe that Frasier, Niles and Lilith, all on the spectrum. I mean, it's very clear to me. <laughs> uh, my, it, some people don't agree with me, but um, uh, I don't really care because... Um, my, that's what my Aspie uh, radar detects. Uh, so, um, so yeah, I'm sticking with it. Uh, so, um, 
the next one would be oh um mm, do i include michael in my family um probably because i reckon he is um definitely on the spectrum as well uh which i know i absolutely love my family uh mr bean um brilliant character so so funny uh why you, you know why he can't you know he can't communicate he doesn't communicate he's like a silent character or nearly silent um with the occasional grunt um but yeah he is also a genius because like he managed to drive a car whilst sitting on the roof he manages to take his trousers off uh, his pants off without taking his trousers off um in the movie when he saves the painter he saves the guy's life he um he uh, catches a plan to to save the painting because the painting is ruined the whistler's mother and he um he put he put um stuff in the, the guard's coffee and switches all the keys around so it's it's a whole it like it's like a genius i i think that uh, mr bean is definitely up there in one of my favorites another one being as time goes by so they had a character a recurring character in that called mrs bale who was uh the housekeeper at uh lionel's um parents or well dad and stepmom's house and uh she was definitely uh autistic she had uh she was obsessed with the shipping forecast and she was extremely precise uh, she she would say things like dinner will be served in thirteen minutes precisely, <laughs> so it's just like um, very uh, and yeah comes across as very stern, quite scary at times. But yeah, she's still alive. Actually, the actress that played her, I can't can't believe it. Um, but um, yeah, I love I love that um what else is there bones i love bones um temperance brennan in bones which is like it's actually been confirmed that she's autistic but um like fox the news station refused rather like the company like production company fox it refused to um like actually say in the show explicitly because they said and i quote that people would not want to watch it which makes me extremely angry that is very ableist fox naughty naughty foxy noxy but um yeah <laughs> um and are there any more well there are loads more there are plenty more but um that i can think of who else Well, I'll just, um, well, I mean, there's my favourite comedian, Lee Mack. He has ADHD in real life. Um, so does Anne McPartland. Uh, yeah, they're both ADHD. So, um, yeah. Uh, and I think that just about wraps up um, today's video, actually. I know it's quite an abrupt end. Um but uh yeah no i just wanted to talk about some of the good stuff um and uh be positive 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 and uh, i hope you enjoyed and i hope you like and share and subscribe and um i hope you get some good information from this and i will see you tomorrow goodbye god bless and continue being awesome